Hello and welcome to this Level 3 Mathematics in Context training video for Pearson Edexcel. In this video we're looking at histograms. The specification reference says that we need to construct and interpret diagrams for grouped discrete data and continuous data, in other words histograms with equal and unequal class intervals, and cumulative frequency curves using them appropriately, and we're focusing on histograms in this video. There are no relevant formula available in the formula book but for this specification reference. Here's the mapping document, mapping the content of the core maths, mathematics in context references to the GCSE and GCE. And you can see that there is a lot of crossover with some of the other qualifications. On some ideas for teaching this topic. So we're gonna focus on histograms where unequal class widths might be uh, appropriate. So for example, vaccinations in large scale vaccinations, the method of distribution could well be by age, perhaps starting with those over 70. And then as the programs rolled out, the age groups might not be uniform. So it might be 70 and over. And then the next group could be people over the age of 60. So 60 to 70, maybe the next one would be 40 plus and then 20 plus, and then maybe just mopping up maybe 15, 16 year olds upwards. Depends on the type of vaccination, of course. Uh, another consideration could be surveying a school. So if you're looking at students, depending on the nature of the survey in the secondary school, it might be appropriate to group years seven, eight, and nine together as key stage three, and then 10 and 11, key stage four, and lastly, years 12 to 13 as key stage five. Or if it's a survey of staff, then your classes could be maybe how long have you been teaching? And it might make sense to have unequal groupings there. Maybe the ECTs in their first two years of teaching is one group, and maybe then you go up to five years, so three to five years, maybe five to 10 next, and then perhaps anybody over 10 years is their own group, but different groupings and leading towards potentially unequal class widths. So some key skills for this reference include that students need to understand that in a histogram, it's the area of the bar that represents the frequency. And the concept of frequency density is important, therefore. So choosing a suitable scale on the frequency density, the vertical axis might be required as well. And students should be able to read from a histogram to provide estimates alongside, of course, drawing histograms too. Here's an example of a exam question. It says, a company makes steel bars. 100 steel bars are tested and the percentage of carbon in each steel bar is measured and the table gives information about these steel bars. And there's a, a grouped frequency table. So percentage of carbon on the left with frequencies on the right hand side. And the first part says, show that the frequency density for the class interval 0.6 less than or equal to C less than 0.9 is 20. So we're given the value of 20. So we're just being expected to use our knowledge of frequency density, frequency over class width, and show that in this case, frequency density is six divided by the class width of 0 0.6 to 0 0.9, which is 0.3. So six divided by 0 0.3, which is 20 as expected. So in the mark scheme, we're just looking for that calculation essentially, uh, either fully 0 0.9 minus 0.3, six in the denominator or you can just put that as 0 0.3 and we're looking for an exact answer there and the examiner's report shows that almost all the correct responses to this just use six divided by 0 0.3 directly although a number of students didn't provide an answer at all part b of this is the same information but on the grid opposite draw a histogram to represent the data in the table so you've got a table that looks like that and a grid with some information provided the horizontal axis is filled out, but nothing else. So using this table, the first thing we'd want to do is add in a class width column. And so for the first one, 0 0.6 to 0 0.9 is 0.3. Recall we just looked at that in part A. The next one from 0 0.9 to 1.1. So you can just subtract these to get the class width. That is 0 0.2. It's continuous data and there's no gaps between this because of the way it's notated. So 1.1 to 1.2 is just a width of 0.1 and so on for the others. Following on from that, we'd want to add in our frequency density column. Frequency density is frequency divided by class width. So six divided by 0.3. Again, that's the one we did in part A, but it's 20. Next one's gonna be 16 divided by 0.2 or 80. 
and then just following it through for the other ones. 25 divided by 0 0.1 is 250, that's our highest value, but we've done all of the frequency densities there. So drawing that onto this table, just so it's easier to see it all in one place, you can see frequency density, the highest is 250, so we need to go at least as high as that on the vertical axis. Uh, it's a histogram, and in histogram diagrams we need to start at zero. So think about what we could do here, and planning it out a little bit before we start drawing numbers in. Going up every 10 squares is worth 50, seems to work well. That lays it out like this with a title. That means that we can fit 250 on without going off the top, and it's not all cramped together towards the bottom of the graph either. Next, we just need to draw the bars. And down the bottom here, you can use the fact that this is zero and that is 50, and there's 10 little squares in between them. So each little square is worth five. We need to draw from 0.6 to 0.9. So 0.6 to 0.9, a height of 20, which will be four squares tall. So that first bar looks like that. Next bar continues on immediately from that one because it's continuous data, so no gaps. 0.9 to 1.1 with a height of 80 looks like that. And then continuing onwards, so next one is only a, a width of 0.1. It's quite a narrow bar, but it is tall, 250. And then so on and so on, other bars like that. Our scheme for this one is saying there's a B1 mark for calculating the frequency densities, or at least three of them anyway. A second one for choosing an appropriate scale on the vertical axis. So even if students have incorrectly calculated some frequency densities and so they are needing to go higher or lower than they actually should do, the 250 is required. Uh, as long as they've chosen a suitable scale for their values, they'll get that mark. And then the third one is for correct uh, bars drawn. Examiner's report essentially says that lots of students were successful at this, although some students were drawing frequency curves or maybe frequency polygons, and some were occasionally drawing cumulative frequency diagrams. And with the help from part A giving them a hint about frequency densities, some students still didn't actually calculate any of those. Although, as mentioned, a lot of students were clearly very successful at this. So in this section, we're asked the steel with a percentage carbon content from 0.7% to 1.5% is suitable to make cutlery. Estimate the number of these steel bars that are not suitable to make cutlery. So estimate how many steel bars are outside of that given range there. So using the histogram to help with this, it is 0.7 is there on the diagram. And the section to the left of that is outside what we're wanting. 1.5 on the right hand side there. And that section there shaded in is the part that we're interested in. So any cutlery with a carbon percentage content between it's in the shaded sections are ones that we don't want. So calculating how many that is. So the area of the bar tells us this first section here has a width of 0.1 and a height of 20. So multiplying those together means that there are two in this section over here on the left shaded in. Section on the right is in two parts. So one of them is 0.1 times 80, which gives eight. And that last section, we can just look that up in the table. It's 10. You can do the calculation if you wish. It's 0.4 times uh, 25 would also give you 10. Adding those together gives a total of 20. And that's how many items of cutlery we would estimate would not be suitable. Uh, there, sorry, how many of the steel bars would not be suitable. So the mark scheme is essentially um, method mark for finding any of the sections that we want, uh, second method mark for adding them up, and an accuracy mark for the answer. Uh, you would be given credit for finding the middle section and taking that away from 100 as well, although that's a longer process. So the examiner's report shows that this was largely well answered. Um, although there is a comment about how considering that students laying out their work to make it easier to follow may be of use because it's sometimes a little bit difficult to tell what it is a student's doing, but generally quite answered fairly, uh, answered fairly well. Some top tips with STEM. One to be aware of is that this topic does draw fairly heavily on previous GCSE knowledge, so students' prior experience will need to be considered. Perhaps especially if you've got students coming to you from foundation tier, they may have little experience of this topic. And at this level, interpretation of histograms is more likely to be required. So it's important that students get the chance to practice this aspect of the topic 
as well as drawing them.